In today's video, I'm going to show you guys everything I know about sampling. How you can find samples online, how you can chop them up, how you can add counter melodies to them. How is your day going? I hope it's going well. Without further ado, let's get into it. Yeah, that was good. So first, we have to find a sample. And my favorite way to do that is going down the YouTube rabbit hole of all the playlists and channels that they have. We're on YouTube, and there are a couple ways to find what you want, but I'd say be semi-specific. So for instance, we could say Asian jazz samples 90s. And then we're gonna go over to the filters and click on playlist and now there are a bunch of playlists that we can open in new tabs and some of them aren't going to have what we want but really the goal should be finding a channel that has a bunch of stuff that you like because there are a lot of youtube channels out there that just post samples every single day and you can subscribe to them and then just when you're on youtube you'll be finding samples even when you aren't purposely doing that I've probably gone through a lot of these already. To get it started, let's just open some of these in a new tab. And from there, we are gonna find artists that we like, we're gonna find channels that we like, and we might just find samples directly in the playlists too. Like for instance, if we liked how this sounded, we could look up Dave Hewson, we could open the vinyl noise in a new tab, or we could say, this playlist seems pretty good and keep going through it. I, I've already sampled that song. <laughs> This is more just an example of how you can find samples. And once we find one that I feel like will be a good example, then we'll download it. All right, now this channel seems a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna open it in a new tab because a lot of samples in these playlists, um, you'll notice views wise, like just a lot of people have seen them and it's fine to sample the same thing as someone else, but it is fun finding stuff that uh, is smaller. I'm just opening some of these channels and new tabs. And you know, for instance, this one has a thousand subscribers. So even though this video has a hundred thousand views, we could assume that they have other stuff that not as many people have listened to. All right, now sometimes the problem you might run into is that the channels you open in a new tab just posted one song and then posted a bunch of random other stuff like this. I don't really know what's going on there, but I wish them the best. Then you can just keep going through and finding more channels. I'm a fan of Dream Chimney. I like that. Oh, see, but this one has some more. Original piano, dang. All right, another good way to find samples is on YouTube, look up OST or original soundtrack and then filters and go to playlist. And then I've already, I feel like everyone has gone through these top couple ones. But if you scroll down like forever, you're gonna find some really obscure shit. And I promise soon we'll get into how to chop them up. I just wanna show you guys, you know, kind of my process of finding samples. All right, I think we got enough playlists. But if you really want, what I sometimes do is I'll open like a million playlists in a new tab and just spend like a whole day finding a bunch of samples you know and by the end of the day i'll have like 200 of them so if you want you could do that you could open every ost ever um, and find all the good ones honestly i could hear a beat on that so now here comes the part i can't talk about but you want to very legally download um the links that you get and i know you guys know how to do that you know it's fine a couple others and then we'll get to chopping all 
right, now that we got our samples, we can get into how to quantize them and chop them up. So I have three different samples. They're all a little bit different. You know, one of them I might just get a little part of it. And uh, one of them I know I'll probably get about eight bars. The first thing I do when I have a sample dragged into FO is I hit C on my keyboard and then chop the beginning that has no sound in it. Now a lot of people will tell you that you should go in here and go edit and then find the tempo. Oh, you you know, you click here, detect tempo. There's a better way to do that. So first, what you have to do is listen through and find the parts of the sample that you want to use. So we're going to listen through and figure out what part we want to use. And there are a couple parts in there that I want to use. I chopped it right here because I know that I want to use something over there. And I also want to use the beginning part. So now what we want to do is listen and find where it would loop back. So in my head, I'm imagining a metronome and I'm hearing what a four or eight bar loop would be. A four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Right there is four bars. So right here, is where we would loop back if it's an eight bar loop. Now that we have this, we're going to right click on this section of the sample that we took. Then we're going to make sure that the stretch tool is selected. And we're going to stretch it right to this nine, right to the end of an eight bar pattern. Now there's still going to be some parts of it that are off time, but this at least means that the ending is correct because we chopped it right where we want it to loop back. So now we can go in and make sure that all of the individual notes are somewhat on time. Oh, and also I forgot to say, but you should put it on stretch instead of resample because otherwise it's going to pitch it based on how you stretch it. Now this one sounds a little off. So we're gonna cut here and then make this first section unique so that when we stretch it, it's not going to mess up the other part. And now we're going to stretch this on grid, stretch this so they still line up. And I know that I could have chopped it from earlier, but sometimes when something is off time, you can fix a larger chunk of it. So because we fixed it here, hopefully over here it will be fixed too. And a lot of the time you can see visually how off time it is. Like right here, um, we know that the sample should be hitting right about here, but it's a little over to the right. So we're going to go in there and do the same process where we make this unique in the section before and then stretch this. It gets a little off at the end. Um, we just have to do the same method. And at first you might not know like what to stretch to what um, spot. Over time you'll get better at that. And also, it could be cool if you stretch it in a way where it's like on time, but not in the way that the song originally was. And I know that this has to be shifted over a little bit. And I know that that isn't perfect, but like I said, it just needs to be good enough that it doesn't sound really fun up with drums. Now we have that other section that I liked. So I'm gonna delete the rest of it because I don't really need it. And we're gonna do the same thing where we listen and hear where eight bar loop is. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So right here is four bars. Over time, it will just become intuition and you won't have to count it out in your head, but it is useful. If I wasn't doing it for the tutorial, normally I can kind of visually look at the sample and once I've heard it, I can tell like probably where the eight bar loop is. One thing I forgot to say is if your sample is clicking, you can go in and change the de-clicking mode from transient to smooth or they have other options. You can just see what sounds best. But I know that if you put all of them on smooth, it will make things click less. If I had done this before I chopped it up, I wouldn't have to click on all of them and do it. All right, now that we have that done, I have a little trick for you guys. So this does require you to have a third party plugin, but there may be alternatives. I just don't know what they are. It's the Isotope RX10 Voice Denoise. My boy Nash actually put me onto it. Shout out Nash. You can use this to remove some of the noise in the background if you don't like how noisy your sample is. So what we're gonna do is turn off adaptive mode and then play the sample and click learn twice. And it learns the 
EQ curve of the noise that's going on and then phase cancels it. And now we want to change this to music and you can mess with the threshold and reduction. So if you turn the reduction all the way up, it's going to be removing more noise. But let's see what that could do. Sometimes it can sound a little weird with the reduction all the way up. So I'm going to turn it down a little bit. Well, here's just a little before and after. This is before. Later on, I'm going to make beats out of the samples that we chop up. But for now, let's do another example because we have two other samples. So I'm going to drag those in and chop them up. And then later on, we'll try putting drums on them and try adding counter melodies. And I'll show you guys some other techniques. Now this one, the BPM is a little more obscure, but I've chopped it where I want the sample to start. And now we can find the end of it right here. So now we can stretch that. And you can either change the BPM or you can stretch the sample. And even though that sounds a little off time, I think that with drums, it will sound fine. Now, I know that we could add a bunch of crazy effects to the samples. A lot of the time when I sample stuff, you know, I might reverse it or pitch it, but I'm not really adding a million effects on top of each other because it can clog things up a lot. But if you guys want a video where I go over how to do really complicated effects and flip melodies and sounds that you have, let me know. I can do a video like that. But I feel like for this video, I want to focus more on just actually how to sample, you know, how to find samples and put them on time and put drums on them. But yeah, I can cover that in another video if you guys want. Now that we have all the samples chopped up, I wanna show you guys something that I do a lot when I'm sampling. Um, if we have an EQ pulled up on a sample and we remove a lot of the low end, it makes it so that we can put any 808 bass notes that we want, at least that are in the same key. And they don't have to exactly follow what the sample does because sometimes you might hear a sample and you really like the texture and the sound of it, but but you might not like the chords that it has or it might not work for the genre you're making. So with this sample, I'm gonna EQ out the low end and then really quick, I'm gonna do some drums so I can show you guys what I mean. All right, so we've got some simple drums done and I have an 808 pulled up and the low end is EQ'd out of the sample. So now we can do different 808 patterns and they'll still sound fine because we removed the low end from the sample. And right now the 808s are a little low, so I'm gonna pitch the sample up a little bit. All right, so as you can see, those bass notes work, but if we wanted to, we could clone the 808 and copy it over and have it be the opposite where it starts on this one and then goes up here. Now let's talk about counter notes. I was gonna have a whole section where I talk about adding counter melodies to samples. Number one, my, my good friend Cody made a whole video on that. So I'll, I'll just put that in the description and you guys should go watch that. But also I'd say you can just treat it like adding melodies to something you were making. You know, like at this point, this sounds like something someone could have made without a sample too. So just add melodies and go watch Cody's video. And I have a melody video coming out soon too on the internet money channel. With all that combined, I feel like I don't need to talk about adding melodies in this video. Um, what else do I want to cover? Let me, let me check my notes. Oh yeah, the legality sign. Okay, so I, I feel like a lot of small producers worry about samples and clearing them. While sometimes they can get taken down off of Spotify if you sample something, I would say don't worry about it too much. Don't make exclusively sample beats, but like if you make some beats that have samples in them, a lot of the time the labels will be fine with it being a sample and they'll clear it if you get a placement with it. And sometimes you might sample something and you'll flip it so much that it's unrecognizable. 
possible. So yeah, don't worry too much about the legality. I'd say just have fun and uh, there are more resources on YouTube about the legality of sampling, but don't let it freak you out too much because at the end of the day, music is about having fun. Even if you make a beat and it samples, you know, like 30 songs and then you can't clear it, like it was probably still fun making that beat. So it's not really too much of a loss. Again, I'm gonna do the 808 trick where since we have a low end EQ'd out, we can make the bass notes different. Another cool thing is if you have a sample where it's perfectly on time or where the BPM of it is a little obscure, you know, like it's just a lot of textures going on, you can make a beat like this where it keeps evolving with the song. The drums stay similar, but like the sample evolves over time. That's one nice thing about a lot of ambient music is it doesn't really have too much of a BPM. So sometimes you can get away with just dragging it in and then putting drums over it and having the drums go over the whole thing. All right, last one, we got this one from Treasure Planet. Let's see, I'm gonna try pitching it down and then we'll slow the BPM down to like 148. And then I'm gonna try putting some effect tricks on it. That might be cool. turned into a cook-up towards the end um, but I hope you guys learned something uh, about sampling um, even if you just learned one thing from the video yeah I guess that's about it uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one let me know what other videos you want me to make